count ifs, a pivot table, or Power Query with import text files. The next three videos will see how to create this cross tab report where we count work hours less than zero by name, description for each month, and from the disposition column, divide or one of three other conditions or criteria. Now, COUNTIFs will be the most difficult to create, but Excel Worksheet Formulas are the only feature that will instantly update when formula inputs change. Pivot tables are by far the easiest to create. And although they don't update instantly, a simple refresh will update our report. And Power Query is what we want to use when we have external data and we expect to get more data later. Now, one problem with formulas that we don't have with pivot tables is we have to somehow create all of the conditions and criteria. Now you can go and copy a column, copy it off to the side data, remove duplicates to create something like this, or you can use some of the Office 365 dynamic array formulas like Unique. But we're going to concentrate on the formula that goes on the interior of this cross tab report. Now we can use the amazing function count ifs. It will easily count with six conditions or criteria. The trick is, from our source table, we're going to have to match up the column, which goes in criteria range, with the criteria. Now for this report here, we have name, description, disposition, but the date is actually going to give us trouble. Because when the formula copies to the side and down, all the conditions are easy to go and get with cell references except for the date. Because for that date, when we copy it to the side, it needs to be locked until it gets to this section. So that's tricky. And we'll see three different ways to deal with it. All right, so let's start this formula. We'll start with the name condition first. Criteria range 1. Because this is an Excel table, I hover my cursor. And when I see the black downward pointing arrow, I click. That'll select the whole column. We see the table name and column name in square brackets, comma. Criteria 1, we're matching the condition or criteria with our column. Now when we copy this formula down, we want to see the new condition in each row. But when I copy it to the side, I need it locked. So we hit the F4 key one, two, three different times. With the dollar sign in front of the I, it means when we copy it to the side, it will not move. But when we copy it down, the 9 will move to 10, 11, and so on, comma. Criteria range 2. We're going to go for our second column. That's description. Click, comma. Criteria 2, selecting J8. Now we hit the F4 key one, two times. We're locking the row. So as we copy down, it's locked, but not the J. So when we copy to the side, it will move to K, comma. Criteria range 3, disposition, comma. It's in J6, and we hit the F4 key to lock it in all directions, comma. The next column, we're going to select Work Hours. And now we type a comma. We need less than 0, so we hard code this one in. Double quotes, then the comparative operator less than 0, and double quote, comma. And the criteria range 5 and 6 are going to both be the date column. And what we need to do is, since we have the first of the month, I need to compare the date column and ask the question, are you greater than or equal to the first of the month, which is the lower limit, and are you less than or equal to the end of the month? So in criteria 5, we'll select date, comma. And the lower limit means we need double quotes in the comparative operator, are you greater than or equal to, and double quotes. We have to join it to. And for the time being, in J7, that's the 1st of December, we'll hit the F4 key. That'll work for now. That's the lower limit. Now we type comma, and the final range will be date again, comma. And here we need to create the upper limit. So we ask, double quotes, are you less than or equal to, and double quotes, and join it to, well, I can't just use the first of the month because I need the end of the month. I'm going to hit the F4 key, and we'll convert December 1st to the end of the month by using the end of the month function. Start date, comma. And we want to jump zero months. That means we want the end of December. 
close parentheses. Now, that formula right there will almost work. Close parentheses. Now, when I Control Enter, we can't use the crosshair or angry rabbit to copy because the column references will move as relative cell references. But we can highlight the entire range. And with the active cell at the top, I hit F2. And I'm going to use Control Enter. That is one way to copy. We could have used Control C, Control V. And in fact, let me show you another way. Control Z, we could here do Control R to copy it to the right, and then Control D to copy it down. Now I'm going to go to the last cell, and we're going to have a date problem. But what I want to make sure when I F2 is I just want to make sure that I have all the right columns, name, description, disposition, and so on. But already from this last cell, I can see for February, that's the wrong date. So here's the cheap and easy way to do this. I'll highlight this section, F2, and just use my Move cursor. So click and drag, and then Control-Enter. Same here, F2, Move. So that's the cheap and easy way. Control-Enter, and our formula works. If I come up here and change this to Transfer, everything's working. Now if we come up to the top, F2, the problem is when we copy the formula, it's totally locked on December. But what I want is copy it to the side. It's locked. But when I get to this column right here, I want January. And then when I copy it further, I want February. Now we're going to see two tricks. The first trick is instead of using the actual cell, we'll use the function edate. And edate can jump forward a certain amount of months. So in my formula, if I had edate 0, 0, 0, it wouldn't jump. But if all of a sudden edate had 1, 1, 1, it would jump from December to January. And over here, 2, 2, 2. So if we use edate, that means we need a formula number incrementer that gives us zeros, ones, and twos. So down below, I'm going to see if I can create that number incrementer. We'll use the columns function. And I'm eventually going to be in cell J9. So I type dollar sign J9 colon J9, close parentheses. That's an expandable range where the first J is locked but the second one is not. Since I'm copying across the columns, Control-Enter, this increments the numbers 1 to 9. If I copy it down, that's not what I want, but that's the interior part of what we want. Now, F2, I want to subtract 1, because we're going to need to start from 0. Control-Enter, we get 0 to 8. F2, if I take that and divide it, since we have groups of 3, I'm going to divide by 3. Control Enter, 0 and some decimals, 1 and some decimals, 2 and some decimals. So F2, if I take the integer of that, that'll give me zeros, ones, and twos. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Now if I F2 and put that inside of E date, I can lock it on the first date, F4, comma, and that's the number of months to jump ahead. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Those are the serial number dates. If I add date, we can see we have exactly what we want. Control Z. Now in the top cell, I'm going to copy this. Control C. And through all these formulas, now I don't have to copy them in sections. I can just F2 in the top. And right where I have the date, double click, Control V. Double click inside of end of month, Control V. Now I can populate this all the way through, and I have exactly what I want. I have December here, January here, and February here. Now there's another way we can do that. What if the condition wasn't a date? Well, we sure couldn't use edate. Instead, we can consider this a lookup range with nine cells. And if we want to look up the first item, 1, 1, 1, and then the fourth item, 4, 4, 4, and then 7, 7, 7, we'd need our incrementer inside of a lookup function to give us 1s, 4s, and 7s. So if we come down, and we'll use the same incrementer, but we'll adjust it a bit, Control-C, and down here a few cells, equal sign Control-V. When we control enter, what if we multiplied those results by 3? Then we'd get 0, 0,3,6, which is almost what we want. F2, 
times 3, Control Enter. Now all we need to do is add 1. F2 plus 1. Control Enter. And now that tells us the relative position within that range right there, F2. So after the equal sign, we use index. Select F4. So in array, those are the dates, comma. And there's the relative position of the item to look up. Close parentheses, Control Enter. So now we can try Control C. And then in the top cell, F2, where we have E date, Control V. Now we have index. Inside of start date and end of month, Control V. And that formula will work whether or not the condition is a date or something different. Control Enter. And that's our third method. All right, so we saw count ifs with index, count ifs with E date. And then, of course, we saw the just count ifs and the sledgehammer method where we had to copy it over and move the cell reference. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And be sure to check out these future videos, including maybe even a DAX one.